Hey folks, Coyote Duran here, and you've tuned in to Have Paul Will Draw with Coyote Duran. This is episode 5, and in this episode we're continuing what I like to call the facial phenomenon. Working on profiling, and in a good way. So, make sure you grab yourself some paper, grab yourself a pencil, and join me for Have Paul Will Draw. Alright, so we are back at the board with our sketchbook and our pencil, and today we are going to examine a profile shot. So, hopefully you've got a beverage at the ready with your nice Marvel Superhero Tumbler and your sketchbook or your paper or whatever, and we're ready to go. Now, last week we examined right here, this is the finished product, We've got the egg situation, the upside down egg. And we've got the full face of the man, the nondescript individual who we worked on last week. And if you worked on this uh, last week and you have um, an example that you'd like to share, please make sure that you comment on, on the YouTube post for this particular lesson. And uh, if not, then send me your uh your finished renderings at uh art of the paw p a w at gmail dot com or you can send them to me on twitter at uh, at uh, coyote duran or you can send them to me via facebook at c d creation nation um, all sorts of ways to get hold of me and to to share your finished work but today we're going to work on the full profile I would mentioned a couple different profiles last week in my intro. Uh, one of them is the three-quarter profile, which is not necessarily a full facial um, exposure, nor is it a full profile exposure. But in this lesson, we're going to examine the full profile. And what that is is the full side of the face. Um, how I like to start that, and it's not going to necessarily go back to the whole upside-down egg thing, it's going to be something like this. It's going to be, you take your, your pencil here, look at this, okay? Easy, 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 easy. Okay, this is something, I don't quite know if this is going to be an egg. Maybe it is. It is. It kind of does look like an egg, doesn't it? Well, maybe not. Maybe it's some sort of like misshapen guitar pick, okay? Because you got that pointy edge here, like so. Okay, and you got the big back of the head. Maybe this is something kind of like an alien type thing. The alien type guitar pick head. You know, you see like the green, you know, I don't quite know what you would call them, but you see them in the X-Files and stuff like that. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and work on this like we did last week's piece, okay? We're going to try to find our center. Now let's start actually from, let's create a horizontal line from here to here, okay? We're going to, boop. Go ahead and give you a horizontal line right here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be horizontal, okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and give us a center line down the top. Okay? Right there. We're not going to look at anything where it's going to try to join with the tip. We're not going to try to be, like, mondo symmetrical, like, from here to here or whatever. What we're doing, we're going to try to establish a center point here like we did last time. Now this is a little more difficult in regard that we aren't dealing with the full face here. And it, if I could take this and turn this in the 3D sense, I would take this and do one of these numbers. Okay? But I can't do that. Because this right here is the actual side of the head. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and commit to another line here. See that? Just a little bit south of this line. And you know what? Maybe here's what we what we want to do. We probably want to go ahead and uh, let, let's go ahead and eliminate this line so we're not distracting ourselves. Okay. All right, great. So between here and here, we want to make certain that we get a center line right here, approximately. And this right here is probably equidistant from here to here. And then here to here, something right down here. There's probably a little more room. But at this point, what we're trying to do, we're trying to establish 
uh, where the top of the nose and the bottom of the nose ends, okay? So let's go ahead and what we'll do here is we'll start working on an eye at this point because we've established that these horizontal lines here are good for starting an eye area. Now an eye, an eye socket, an eye opening is not going to start here. Okay, you might think it would, but that just wouldn't be realistic. That's not how the human face works. If you look at the side of your own head, if you look in a mirror, you know, and this is why it's good to have something like this. Oh, hey, look at that. How you doing? Anywho, um, it's good to have something like this in order to work on full facial stuff. Like, I'm going to look into this right here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going like, to do this, and then I'll do a self-portrait of myself, but I haven't done that in a long time. And you really can't do this sort of thing because then you wouldn't be able to look at your paper while you're doing it, you know? So that kind of gives you a, a hurdle to climb. But this is good for the full facial stuff. And I suggest anybody getting a mirror if they want to do that type of thing. If you could look at yourself, you would see that your eye... And you know what? I'm not going to... I'm going to do this like this. Watch this. Check it out. Here, here is the mirror, okay? And as I look this way you can see that that eye isn't fully toward the front, this area. Okay, it's just kind of set back a little bit, right about there, okay? I'm going to do this again. I'm going to try my best to angle this. Oh, how, oh, how valiant. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Okay, and you see it's it's set back a little bit. It's going back past the, the actual spot where the bridge of the nose starts. So... I am going to move back a little bit with that, and I'm going to start here. This is where the eyeball is going to start, okay? You see that? Right there. That kind of gives you an idea. If you looked at that mirror shot, this is where the iris and the cornea, etc. And then you can do this here. You can do a little bit of pointing in here. And this right here, let's just say that is the opening of the eyelid, okay? Now, because you have this, you're going to want to pull back a little bit with these, with this area here. Because this right here is the forehead, and even this here is incorrect. We're going to wind up shaping that a little later. But from this point, you're going to want to actually pull back that forehead, like so, because you've got that eye back here. Now, the nose is going to stick out a little further, but here you've got a guideline where you can actually continue the nose. But the nose isn't going to stick out super far either. That just isn't realistic. So I'm going to give you something of a generic guideline here. Like I did last week, you're going to see placement, and you're going to see spatial privileges and stuff like that. So this is coming out here. This is not affording anything like, you know, a bump on the bridge of the nose, pronounced bridge of the nose, you know, a big, you know, knob right here. There are some folks who've got a pronounced nose where you've got, you know, a larger area here. We're not going to go that far. What we're going to do, we're just going to establish that a nose is here and that an eye is here. Okay, so now we've got this eye. Thanks to this guideline, you have this eye. You have this opening here, and it's going to continue a little bit back further because this is a significant opening, okay? You know, you've got so much going on here. You've got, boom, an eyeball, okay? Okay, this is, this probably isn't even correct having it back this far. And right here is probably about right. There's my handy dandy paper mate eraser stick. So, we're going to have that right there, okay? So now that you've established you've got an area where the eye is, you can go ahead and continue working on this nose, which ends where this line is established. And you can go ahead and pull this in a little bit. Now remember, there really isn't much for this nose either. It's just the tip of the nose, and it comes down here, and then, boop, you got yourself what looks like a nostril. We're going to be real basic with this stuff, see? We're going to be real basic with it because we are not going to work on the super mondo details right now. We're just going to establish structure, okay? Now, from here, if you look at yourself, you'll see that you kind of have a little divot here. And it leads to the top of a lip. 
on the top of the lip isn't really super far from the bottom of the nose. Now, the, the, the top of the lip, we'll, we'll come back to the top of the lip because we want to establish distances for that. But one thing that we wanted to remember was that the top of the eye, or actually the side of the eye, and the bottom of the nose help establish the area where the ear sets. So, I'm going to actually use this here as a guideline for the ear. So, we'll go ahead and start here. we got this little starting point. We'll go ahead and pull up like this. And we're not going to be fancy with it. We're just going to give a guideline. See, there's an ear. See that? Okay, not necessarily correct, but it's developing a spatial reference. Remember what I said last time, ears are different. An ear like this that curves into the side of the face is considered a mutation among humanity. I know that's weird. It isn't like the X-Men or anything, so don't worry. But an earlobe that connects straight into the side of the face is considered normal, anthropologically speaking. But what do I know, man? I'm not a scientist in that regard. I just draw. So, we have the distinction of an ear here. Now, from here, we can actually start doing some cool things. Now, from here, okay, we can establish that we've got a chin here and we've got the top of a lip here. Now, it helps if you have that mirror to where you're doing one of these numbers. Okay, this helps. Bang. Oh, look, it's time for me again. Whoa. I don't know if you can see it because I got a beard thing happening here. But you can see right here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where it kind of comes out. Whoop, bang. And then it starts that lip. Okay? So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and curve this down from the bottom of the nose. And then, boop. Hey, we got a lip. A top lip. All right? Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of continue here with the remain with the start of a bottom lip. I'm not going to worry about giving you a line here. I'm going to start developing a bottom lip. And it doesn't have to be pouty. It just has to be as natural as humanly possible. Now, remember what I said about this particular shape here, a guideline or whatever. This isn't necessarily going to be your final image. This is just a guideline to where you want to place certain things. And this here is weird. You don't want this here. You don't want this big, goofy balloon head right here. Because it's, just, it's not normal, okay? But what you do want, you want to be able to develop that there is a chin coming from the bottom of this lip. Now, see what I'm doing here? I'm kind of giving some sort of, like, strong, defining, I don't know what you would call it. Um, not like a keyway of some sort. And then, oh, look, we got the beginnings, the makings of a chin. It doesn't have to be pronounced, but then again, if you're drawing different people, like I said, nondescript guy, you're going to want to, like, maybe add certain things to your character that are unique. Like this right here. See this here? That right there is a guideline. Now this looks like it could be making a chin. Now we're coming up here. Boop, 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 boop. And then all of a sudden, if you look at your own chin, or you look at the, own, the side of your face, you might see that there is something of a dividing line. And this is like the, ed the, the edge of your jaw. Okay, and typically you'll see it come down from right around the bottom of the ear, or the crook of the ear. I like just kind of developing that there's like a line here or whatever. Now don't make this a solid line. This is not meant to be a solid line, because if it were a solid line, it would be goofy. Just kind of do one of these right here, okay? And that's, this is not even fully correct, because there's just too little distance between the front of the lips to that hinge of the jaw, okay? What I am going to do is I'm going to eliminate a little bit of this here so as not to confuse myself or to confuse you. I'm going to bring down my handy-dandy horse hair brush, okay? See that? Okay. So... Now we've established that we've got the makings of a chin happening, and we've got the chin coming up here. But what am I going to do with this big thing here? This don't make any sense. Let's just go ahead and knock out some of that a little bit. Not too much of it, because we want to make sure that we still have a mental guideline. And if you want, it might do better for you to leave that there and just kind of work on this other guideline here and then remove this area. Well, this other guideline that I'm thinking of is what helps make the structure of a skull. 
that. See, that kind of makes sense a little bit. If you imagine the side of a skull, you could probably imagine the back end here of a skull, okay? And in this regard, I had a little too much skull in the back. That's why I threw this little internal line in here. And then... Hey, oh, okay, we got that there. We're pulling that out. All right, there's a lot of things we can do with the back of the head that won't make a difference now, okay? Now, if you feel that this looks a little too weird right now, you can always throw in the makings of a neck, and the neck will always come from right around here. Let's just use this here, this point from the edge of the ear to the back of the skull. You use this as a center line, and just come down here, and then boom. Look, you got the makings of a neck. How about that, okay? The things are still going to look a little strange because this here looks kind of like a weak chin. This kind of looks like a little bit of a, of a thin chin, but you're not considering that you're working in three dimensions. So this isn't as exactly small as you think. But if you think it is, you can bring this line right here, up yonder, right here, which almost kind of works in correlation with the ear. You can kind of bring it down like so. Take your little thin eraser so you're not like wiping out a whole mess of territory. Yeah. Now see, it looks a little normal, a little more normal, I guess. I wouldn't necessarily say it looks super normal, but you can fix these things in what I like to call post-production, okay? So, let's work on this a little bit. Let's work on filling in some of the details on our... I don't know what this dude is. He's maybe maybe he's that character Powder from that movie. If you're like super small, a uh, little you don't remember what Powder is. You don't remember who Powder is. But. Now let's shave this down a bit because nobody's got a forehead that juts out that far. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring this forehead back yonder a little bit, okay? side of the head is always a little more complicated than uh, the front face works. Whoop. I bumped the camera. Sorry about that. I don't want to make you nauseous while you're watching. It's always one of the benefits of having a good beverage. Just get a little nauseous while you're watching. Knock back some water. And, uh, you know, just steady yourself. Maybe put the video on pause. Right the ship a little bit. So look what we got here. We have the makings of the side of a head. We got a profile here. Um, and with this here, let's just work on this eye a little bit. We're going to go ahead and we'll put a little bit of a, a pupil here. And we'll darken this in a little bit. Because he looks kind of spooky. Look how dark that pupil is. He looks kind of spooky. We'll just go ahead and darken this in a bit. And then, what we'll do from here, we'll go from this point here, okay, and then we'll start establishing an eyebrow. And eyebrows really aren't typically much further from the top of the eye. And they're not really lined out. You're not, you really shouldn't find an eyebrow that goes boop, boop, you know. No big upside down check marks or weird fashion statements that you might say on Instagram. There is something of a construction to it. And that has to do with building in hair. Now, don't give this guy a big woolly you know, comb over his eye, work gradually. Work gradually and giving him something smaller. If you want, you can always make it bigger. Uh, uh, if you want, you can always make it smaller or thinner. You can always thin them out with your eraser or just kind of start small from the gate, okay? Now, eyebrows can branch out pretty far. They won't a lot, but a lot of the times they will. So, we'll just use this as an example. And then, let's go here. If you want to add hair to your character, it's a good idea to start right here where the edge of the ear is, where the top of the ear meets the edge of the face. And think about where that hairline is. Now, we're not going to try to do a, a line here. It's easy to want to do a line here. But your people aren't like you know, Max Headroom or Word Clay characters. You know, you just want the kids, and I apologize to say Max Headroom. I know you don't know who Max Headroom is, but try Googling Max, Max Headroom and the actor Matt Frewer. 
and you'll see what I mean. It's kind of like a clay-faced character from the uh, from the 1980s. Very strange, man. Uh, and I think he like did commercials for Seven Up or Pizza Hut or something. I can't remember. So let's establish the temples. Okay, we're gonna establish the temples. We're gonna throw in something of a side hairline right here for lack of a better term. And then I'm going to continue adding in this hair. Oh look, if I just stop here, and he's got like the toilet bowl uh, hairdo. But we don't want to do that. We want we want homie to have a full head of hair. So we're gonna go ahead and, and throw this up here, and then we're gonna continue this hairline up and over like so. <clears throat> but we're not going. We're still not gonna establish like a hard line here. What we're gonna do is establish hair. Something like hair. You know, and you don't have to do it like this. You can do it like this. You can go some swoops here. Practice like crazy. Throw some in the front like so. I'll, maybe I'll do a little bit like crazy with this one. So he's going to be like some sort of weird punk dude from the 80s and whatnot. So what do we got here? We just got hair coming in from here. And it's ascending. It's going upward. So each strand is starting from here, <clears throat> excuse me, and continuing to go upward, like this where it continues here. Okay, now this guy right here, he looks real confused. I don't know if he's just out of like hair care products or whatever, but as we continue here, we're gonna go ahead and continue filling in this spot. Oh, this guy's got hair like me. I got hair all over my head, but it's thin in a lot of places, so. I'm just going to do this for a little bit. Just kind of come down like so. He's got hair. Don't worry about it, folks. Okay, he's got hair and he knows how to use it. Uh, I think. And then from here, <clears throat> we're going to establish a rear hairline. I'm going to go ahead and yank this here. And then yank this here a little bit. See that? And I'm going to give him a bit of a hairline here. Which will continue right about here. And remember what I said, I'm not starting with a hard outline. Starting like so. And he's going to have short hair. We'll give him short hair. He's going to be kind of, kind of clean cut, at least right here. And then what we got, I'll just go ahead and fill this in for giggles. So we're going to pretend dude's got hair. Okay, at least back here. And we're doing this for time to say. This is just quickness, okay? The quick sketch, if you will. Get a little bit of personality. We're gonna throw some hair in right here. I don't know where this dude's from. Maybe California? I don't know. You can wear your hair however you want, wherever you want. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. I'm not gonna make fun of you. Heck, I'll come to your defense if you've got a strange, unique hairstyle. So leave that guy alone. Go sit down somewhere and work on your knock-around sketchbook. And just leave dude alone, okay? So, oh, whoa, whoa, what's this now? Well, that's kind of a styling thing. Not really, but it's just me trying to give a little bit more volume to a man who's slowly but certainly losing his hair. But, you know what? Charisma and charm and talent and a sense of humor, they get you a long way in life. So if you start losing your hair, don't worry about it. It's not that important. Okay, so this guy's got hair everywhere, okay? He's got a calm look thanks to his relaxed eyebrow. He's got a receding, not a hairline, yet. He's got a receding forehead here. It's not all blocky here and stuff. It's not like he'd crush you with a mere headbutt. Let's work on giving this fella a mouth. Okay, we see where these lips are joining together. Now, what, what do we want to do? Ooh, and the camera's rocking. Don't bother knocking. Hold on. Okay, so let's give him a divider of a lip. Now, this lip, as established in our first lesson last week, this lip, line, opening, mouth, if you will, should end right here in correlation with the edge of the eye opening. <clears throat> so that's good. We've got this here. 
But at the same time, in this regard, there should be something establishing that there is a hinge here. A little bit of a mouth opening. It doesn't just come over this way and go, er, stop like a muppet, okay? There's an opening there. And we've got a lip here and a lip here. But we, what we don't want to do, we don't want to give it a line here, and we don't want to give it a line here, because that's just too cartoony. Let's work on a couple of like detail lines that tell us where the lip is. <clears throat> What also helps, spatially, is putting a little distance between that bottom lip and the chin. See this chin? Remember what I said last time out, the only reason we see certain lines and certain details is because the human body is three-dimensional. Okay? So we've got the edge of an ear that shouldn't even belong there. We've got the edge of a chin that shouldn't even belong there. We've got this line of the chin that shouldn't even belong there. That's because this area of the body is sticking out further. Okay? See that? Okay. Now, what am I doing? I'm throwing in a little bit of shadow here. Boom. Now, I'll develop a cheekbone area and a fold where the edge of the nostril goes and works into the cheek. Boom, we got a little bit of a chin right there. And a little bit of a neck right here. So he's kind of a wild character, okay? So I'll extend this neck here. And you won't have to worry about the neck looking super thin, okay? Maybe you will a little bit, but this is just a quick knock around referential sketch. You go over here, you add a detail where the fold of the ear comes in because you're working with a deeper area here. And this is just like the edge of your ear, which I'll just illustrate right here. Look, look, where? Whoa. Okay, it's like right here. You see that? That's just another portion of the ear. So you want to give this line here more to the lobe here. There's kind of a thickness here. That's why you see somebody will get their first earring. It'll be boom, right there. And then there's that weird part of the ear. I forget what it's called. A lot of people get it pierced. It can hurt like crazy if you nick that sucker while you're shaving. So you've got this here, okay? More stuff going on here. More to play with with the ear canal. Because now you're going actually inside the ear, thanks to this section. See that? Okay. And then you've got the edge of the ear. We'll go ahead and throw a little bit more shadows here. We'll go ahead and cross hatch the saddle a little bit. It's not meant to be super detailed, just giving an idea about space. Okay. And I give a few wear lines here because when we blink you know we create wrinkles there in a way this is something of a of a line beneath the eye it develops not necessarily a bag but it's just a line just kind of developing right here because this area will puff out a little more than this area here this kind of curves in a little bit a few more lines in the forehead In another week or so, I'm actually going to do start doing a time lapse, and you'll be able to actually see my work a little not better necessarily. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be I'm going to do something gutsy. I'm going to bring this eyeball back. Watch this. I want to do something that has to do with a time lapse, and the time lapse is going to do have to do with one of my favorite professional wrestlers, John Moxley. Okay, see this is where the eye should really be, right here. Okay. That's a little more natural as opposed to it being yanked out out front. Because if you took that and you looked at the front of his face, his eyes would be too close together. So this is a little bit more reasonable. This is a little bit further back. But if you looked at him full frontal, his eyes would probably be, be, probably be spaced perfectly. So in the next couple weeks, or probably next week, I'm going to go ahead and start a sketch having to do with John Moxley. And it's going to be from beginning to end. You're going to see the pencil stage. You're going to see the ink stage. You're going to see the Copic marker stage. And hopefully, <clears throat> it'll be something 
that you find cool and more detailed and more conscientiously constructed than this. Because that's really what I mean to do with this. Widen that nostril a little bit. Go ahead and give you a little bit of shadow beneath that nostril. A little bit more depth above the lip, the top lip. Okay, you see that? A little bit of structure here. There's something like a shadow in the cheekbone, if you will. Like that. And there we go. Another nondescript guy, but with a full side profile. I am going to do, bring this down a bit like so, so it looks like there's more substance, like his head isn't super thin, and there we go, kind of nondescript, that's Rad hair, I don't know if it's really rad, but it's just kind of like everywhere. He don't care, so that makes my man rad, okay? And so we're going to have two of those numbers. See this here? Whew, he don't care. He just lost his mind one day and said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get a haircut anymore. I'm just going to get to do what I want. I'm going to get me a van and travel the country. Stay in hostels and whatnot. And said, Look at that. It's crazy, isn't it? Woo! He's getting more life as I go on. That's kind of nuts. Kind of cool, though. You know, and here's the thing. Just as long as you have learned something today with this, this chin's probably a little more extended than I want it to be, then you're doing great. So take your sketch. Hopefully you've been following along. I hope you've been following along with this weird dude here with the crazy hair and the earring and the crosshatch Archie Andrews temple... Um, hair action and too thick of the back of his neck. Take this and then do things with it. You know, maybe shorten the eyebrows a little bit. Make the nose a little bigger, like so. Like that. Look at that. Whoa. Whoa. See, we already have some sort of weird proportional improvement here. <coughs> um, maybe work a little bit of facial hair in there. Look at that. And everywhere on this one, right? Mr. Mustache. We'll do one of these where it's like, okay, my man has got a handlebar mustache. He's kind of like a biker type. Huh? What do you think of that? Hold on tight, kids. We're going to Sturgis. There we go. So then just go ahead and take what you've got here and tweak it a little bit, man. Just tweak it. Add little things. Look at your own face in a mirror. You know? Look at the little nuances. I'm watching you, dude. Just look at the little nuances that you can add to your drawing. Subtract some things with your eraser. Add some things with your pencil. And just make it something cool, man. So there you have it. If you want, you can share with me. Uh, if you don't want, that's perfectly fine. But, uh, you know, there you have it. Thanks for sticking around. So there you have it, folks. We've continued on the facial phenomenon, as I like to call it, with a little bit of profiling and the good kind of profiling. We worked on a quick slapdash rendering of the side of a face. And what you do with yours, if you've been pausing or rewinding, just to kind of like absorb some of the little bits of instruction is great. You should continue doing that. But if you have created something of a profile of your own, and now in your own time, you're tweaking it, you're adding little things, even better. If you want to share your examples with me, please email them to me at my email address, artofthepaw at gmail.com. You can also visit my official website, www.coyotedoranart.com, or you can hunt me down on social media, Instagram and Twitter, both slash Coyote Duran, or Facebook, the Howlers page, which is facebook.com CD Creation Nation, all one word. Don't forget, if you have a paw, you can definitely draw. Thank you for joining me.